I'm happy to be here. Uh, first, I want to thank my co-authors, uh, co-workers, Ben Scallon and uh, Jillian Lawrence, also at NRC, and Scott Richards and his team at Reconnect Research for their hard work on this uh, pilot study that we conducted um, uh, actually last year, I think it was. <coughs> So on the uh, your left hand side is the general stuff about the organization of the talk, and then on the right is a little teaser. This is the intro that we that the uh, was read to uh, respondents that came into this free pilot study. Uh, we asked uh, what we said was please answer our brief national survey about flu vaccinations for NORC at the University of Chicago. This should take about five minutes. Your call could not be completed and was routed to the survey. Let's begin. So as background, NRC is always looking at research to improve our best practices for telephone uh, survey data collection. And Reconnect Research is a company that provides uh, as a potential sample source, a non-probability sample of intercepted telephone calls from people whose calls could not be completed. Um, at the, the, it's called RICS, Redirected Inbound Call Sampling, um, and they use what's called a MIDI frame. Um, these telephone numbers coming in to their, their company includes misdialed, incomplete, disconnected, or inbound calls. Um, MIDI calls are forwarded by telephone, uh, telecom companies to research, uh, reconnect research for research and marketing purposes. Um, currently, a large portion of these MIDI calls are calls to 800 numbers that could not be completed and they come available to the company on um, reconnect research. And Reconnect Research also offers an IVR, um, interactive voice response, uh, platform to actually conduct surveys uh, for the mini sample. And of course, uh, at venues last year, they were, I think, and in, in year before, there were some presentations using the mini sample, and so we thought it was a, a good source to, to look at for a couple of reasons. So we decided, um, in particular, for rare population studies, we all have difficulties reaching this population. If you've got a really large sample, like a rig sample, maybe that's a way to reach these rare populations. Um, so what we decided to try to do with this free pilot study is to look at conducting a survey with IVR alone, conducted by Reconnect Research, but then also looking at transferring these calls, these incoming calls, from IVR to a live interview. Right, especially if you have a long or complicated survey, it's something that you would likely want an interviewer to, to conduct. Um, to then evaluate the quality of the MIDI sample to the best of our ability, and then evaluate quality of the survey data relative to population benchmarks to look at the actual sample. So in February 2017, we worked with um, Reconnect Research to design this pilot sample. Uh, we were looking for split uh, sample design, 50% of the completes IVR alone, and then 50% um, with I starting out in IVR and moving to a live interviewer. We collected respondent and child demographics in the survey, asked a few health questions, and in particular, received a flu vaccination. Um, and then we also were looking to identify rare populations such as uh, healthcare personnel, pregnant women, and children, because these are uh, key flu vaccination rates that are reported um, by the CDC. So the questionnaire flow, we, we broke it up into these two stages. Stage one is the, the, the incoming call comes in, they're asked a couple of questions about their health, about health insurance, and then at that point, the sample is split out into the two. So down the uh, left side, they're going continuing to the IVR, and on the right side, um, they're actually being transferred to an NRC um, interviewer. And we didn't actually transfer PII. This basically was a cold call coming to a live interviewer to start asking questions, so we didn't have that transfer. The production phase occurred uh, just six days, guys, <laughs> February 17th through Wednesday, February 22nd. Um, and the reason why it could be done so quickly, and you'll see the size of the sample is pretty large, is that there's a lot of these calls coming in. So it's, it's basically like controlling the fire hose uh, to try to control the sample, especially when you do want to do a control that sample design. Um, so, uh, some of the challenges were informing respondents who did not reach their desired party. They were now being asked to complete the survey, and I read you that intro at the beginning. We didn't really do any more than that unless a question came up to our live interviewers and they were trained to, to answer the question. We did not do any Hispanic language interviewing with the live NRC interviewers, but it was available in the IVR aspect of it. 
Um, we did find some inconsistencies due to the IVR or live interviewer. As you can imagine, when you're in IVR, you're punching numbers for your, your responses. So there were some inconsistencies there that um, we, we found or we, we didn't really uh, plan as much ahead of time as uh, you would want to do in, um, in those study. So we'll share some of our results with you. Um, just stage one, like I said, this is all IVR. Like I said, 140,000 incoming calls um, in that short time frame that we were managing. About 56% were landline, 35% um, cell phone. Um, and out of the uh, uh, 140,000 we completed through the IVR, about 14,000, 10% basically response rate. Then going into stage two, where it split off, we, with these two bars show you in blue, they continued through IVR, and in green, they were transferred to an NLRC interview because, of course, we were interested in what the breakoff would be, right? And you can see the uh, large breakoff when, when a person respondent made contact with a live interviewer, we lost 30% of the sample. The rest, 100%, on this far left bar continued through IVR. And then, when they asked, they asked the second question, we lost another, uh, you know, 75, 70% or so. And then uh, we did not lose as much in the IVR. So you can kind of see where we start losing. And then we actually um, it started leveling off, completed the adult section, completed the child screener section. We did lose more uh, with the live interviewing, um, with uh, asking the question about children under uh, 18. Um, and then at the end, you see overall who, what percent completed. So out of those that came from the IVR first stage, we had 49 complete, and then we, uh, in the IVR, and 27 complete in live. We looked at the distribution of the sample. It looked really good geographically. The only uh, state that stood out was Florida. So there were more incoming calls that could not be completed uh, coming out of the Florida um, sample. This is compared to the ACS, 2015 ACS. Um, so uh, you see Florida right here in the larger bar. Um, item nine response rates were fairly high uh, with the IVR approach. So something, if you were going to use the media sample, you're going to use the IVR, you definitely want to take, pay more attention to, have more prompts in there, you know, more repeats of questions, that kinds of thing. Um, because we did find on the known response rates, sometimes 10 times higher in the IVR uh, respondent um, surveys than in the uh, live. Um, demographically, we looked at uh, uh, comparing the IVR to the live. Um, what we found was that there were more female and older compared to the uh, American Community Survey. Not surprising, a lot of telephone samples of respondents looked like that. Uh, what was surprising and, and nice was that we did find uh, more non-Hispanic blacks in the, uh, the MIDI sample as compared to the ACS. And we also found that the proportion of Hispanics was pretty much on par with what you would find uh, in the ACS. So that, that's good. You, you know, a lot of times we're oversampling to get those groups in telephone surveys. Um, we did ask this one question about respondent mode, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, if we look off to the left here, we asked of the, the respondents, um, would you have preferred a live interviewer? Okay, so these guys went through the IVR, right? Mm -hmm. And they said that about 25% said they would prefer a live interviewer. And these guys went through the, to the live interviewer, and only 60% said they prefer live. So you know, there's there's room there to use IVR. I, that was my takeaway from this one. And then some key results on the flu vaccination, comparing them to national um, flu estimates. Uh, we found that um, for adults 18 plus, healthcare personnel, because remember we did identify those subgroups and pregnant women, they were much lower than the CDC published 2016-2017 uh, flu estimates um, for those responding via uh, the IVR alone. And then the estimate for adults 18 plus responding in live interviews was actually close to that uh, PRFSS. So we did find some differences. Okay. Got one more here, I think, to show you um, on children. Uh, we did find that um, the IVR was lower, 34.5% uh, weighted estimates for flu compared to our benchmark, 55.6%. The live interviewer estimate was closer to the um, BRFS, um, uh, to our benchmark um, for the meeting. Okay. 
So the findings, it is found it possible to transfer the mini sample from IVR to, to live interviewer, certainly possible to identify some of these rare populations. Um, we have a great uh, a, a wealth of sample there. Um, we were able to identify those rare populations within three to five percentage points of what we think that they exist in the population. So that was good finding. We did find substantive differences in our flu estimates, so we would not recommend that the MIDI sample in and of itself be used for these population projections of flu vaccination coverage, um, but that the MIDI calls can provide a fast, cost-effective way of piloting new questions, other times of qualitative um, uh, research, and then also it could be something that you could combine a probability-based sample with the MIDI sample, perhaps do something that way for some rare population um, studies. And there's certainly other ways to improve upon what we did in the pilot study in terms of improving or uh, reducing item non-response, transference, you know, not losing quite so many people, things like that. But we were very happy with, uh, with the pilot. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vicki, uh, I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, first, thanks for your presentation. Um, you didn't mention your weighting methodology? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was on one of the slides. It was a simple post stratification by age, race, sex, ethnicity. Um, it was It's a non probability sample, the mini sample. So basically, we were just trying to balance it on uh, demographics that we thought, you know, saw some skew there um, so that we could kind of do a comparison to the benchmark. So nothing more fancy than that. You know, we didn't do like a combined probability, non probability, propensity kind of weighting. It was just pure post stratification. Thank you. And the second question is, did you get any uh, evidence that people that moved to the live interviewers were confused, that they weren't talking to the original, their intended caller, or were upset, or were potentially in some emergency situation? Yeah, no, we did, you know, we did uh, capture comments. Um, there wasn't anything about emergencies, but there was still some confusion even at the end of the interview, in some cases, about, well, I still didn't get to where I wanted to go. So there is that concern that, you know, you explained well enough in the beginning that you're not going to reach the party you were trying to reach. You know, you're now being moved towards the survey. Um, but there was nothing, I would say, uh, that we uh, saw that was, like, uh, really upset, very belligerent, or anything like that. People basically just sort of, okay, I'm, I'm willing to do a survey. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, so, a question for I guess, all of you about uh, item non-response. Um, did you find it was beneficial or not to allow them to? I thought I saw some some readers had item non-response. So, how did that happen? Did they say skip, or was it just after a certain amount of time with no response that you just get the next question? And would that was that beneficial? Um, that the IVR would get more accurate responses. Yes. When there's social desirability issues. Um, I mean, that's sort of, I guess, our assumption, right? Generally, that sort of self-administered, you're going to get closer to the truth. Um, I guess what we did is we just compared. We, we don't know how much of our results <clears throat> um, stem from the MIDI sample, right? The comp composition of the MIDI sample versus whether it was done in IVR or whether it was done live. It's a combination of all that. What we did was basically just empirically looked at how the estimates compared. And when we compared the IVR estimates on flu to the live interviewer estimates, the live interviewer estimates were closer to the benchmarks. So social desirability, I'm sure, plays a part in it, but uh, we, we certainly weren't able to, would not be able to parse it out with what we did.